Hey, how's it going? This is Justin Garcia again, creator of the data display package for Concrete 5. Um, this is the second installment of the placeholders set of screencasts, and we're going to take a look at three, uh, well, really two different um, placeholders, and then a particular attribute that can be used on a few placeholders um, within your list and detail templates. Um, and we're going to take a look at that attribute first, and um, I'm going to do my best to explain this. It can be a little bit tricky, um, but the, the way that it works um, is I'm going to need to start um, basically by giving a very specific example. Um, and in order to do so, the best way for me to do this is going to be to add a field to my FAQ form. And this may not seem entirely useful, but I'm going to add a field called image. Um, this really isn't related in any way to any sort of frequently asked questions, but I'm going to need the file upload field in my form in order to properly demonstrate um, how this attribute is going to work. So I'm going to go ahead and add a new um, record to my form. We'll just call this, what is this question? I'm not sure how to answer that. And we're going to pick a random file on my computer go ahead and upload. Um, this one should work nicely. And I'm going to submit, I'm going to go ahead and submit that. We can view our form data real quick and see that, um, let's see, we're up here. Um, the file has been uploaded. Just a picture of our dog here. And so we've got our, our file field. Now I'm going to jump back to actually our detail template. Now, what I want to address is if I want that image to show up in my template, how would I do that? Now, your first thought might think, okay, might be, okay, I'm going to put an image tag and my SRC is going to be equal to the image field. But of course, the problem with that is this isn't valid XML. I can't have a um, an element inside of an attribute that doesn't work. Um, so, how in the world am I going to get this, the value of field, that URL that goes to that image, to go inside of um, the image source attribute? So, what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to take that out and I'm going to put it up here. And there's a particular attribute that I can ha have, which is called placeholder. And this can get a little bit tricky simply because all these field, field, list URL, in general, these are called placeholders. Um, but this is a placeholder attribute, and the way that it works is whatever I put as the name uh, of this attribute, in this instance, let's just call it my image. What I can then do with this, once I've assigned the placeholder attribute to this, when this template is generated, if it sees that it has a placeholder attribute, it's going to essentially ignore this with regard to outputting it. So it's going to see it and it's going to do something with it, which we'll get to in just a second, but it's not going to output it if it has the placeholder attribute on it. What that then allows us to do once we've assigned a placeholder attribute is I can then take this value, my image, and I can put it anywhere inside of a set of double curly brackets. I can put my image here. And what this does is it'll take my whatever I assign the my image placeholder and it'll put the actual value of it here so then that allows me to get the value of the URL for the image and put it inside of this um, SRC tag so I'm gonna go ahead and save this hopefully I did everything right I'm gonna flip back to my detail page refresh this so we can get our new answer or new question which is right here what is this question view answer and we can see that there we go the image fills in there I'm going to shrink that down just a little bit just so we can kind of get a better picture of how that works. We'll set it to 150 and we'll float it to the right just to make it look kind of nice. Refresh that. And, oh, my mistake. That'll need to go in here, not inside of the field tag. I'm going to save that. There we go. So now we've got a nice little picture of our dog here on the right. 
Um, and so that's how if you need to put any field value inside of an actual attribute you just create any placeholder and this could be anything and you could call this um, whatever Justin and I can change this and stick it in here save that refresh and we still get the same effect so um, this works well with um, anytime you need to put a field value inside of an attribute and you can do that here so there might be other instances in which that might be um, something that you would need to do and that's how it would be done um, the next uh, placeholder I want to take a look at is the timestamp placeholder and this one's pretty straightforward there's not a whole lot to it I'm gonna fit it in here right after that we display the answer on a new line and I'm gonna say question submitted and then insert our timestamp placeholder the timestamp placeholder has a single attribute which is format the way the format attribute works is it takes this string that you put inside there and it passes it to the PHP date function um, which I've got here open on a new tab and the way that this works is there are certain characters that you can use to represent um, different aspects of the timestamp um, really a lot of them here listed by default when you put uh, the timestamp if you insert it using um, the drop down here uh, it'll put FJ comma Y and here's what that does refresh that let me add a new line there and save it now come back and refresh we can see question submitted on December 22nd 2009 so the FJ comma Y basically means F is the month spelled out, J is the day number, and Y obviously is the year. Um, there's lots of different formats that you can use for that. Um, you can include the time as well. I'm not super familiar with these. I always have to reference it every time I want to um, add one in here, but it does come with a default um, nicely formatted date, but that can be changed any way you want, um, and it'll, it'll replace it in there accordingly. Uh, that's really the extent of the timestamp attribute. The last attribute I want to look at is the answer ID attribute. This one's also pretty straightforward. And I'm just going to put it in here on a new line. And the way that the answer ID works is that each um, answer that's submitted to a form has a unique ID within uh, a site. So every every answer has its own unique ID. If I save this, I'll say that this one has a particular ID of, oops, that's not what I meant to do. Let's do answer ID here. I'll do it right. Refresh. This one has a particular ID of 20 in this case. Um, like I said, every ID will be unique across the site. And this might not seem incredibly useful, but where it really comes in useful is if I put it like I did with my field name and create it as a placeholder and I'm just going to call it answer ID, which then I can stick it inside of, let's say, a particular ID attribute on a particular element in here. And I can say answer ID, or I'm sorry, ID equals the answer ID. And then what that would allow me to do, and we could say, for instance, I can call this image. And if I ref refresh this, it hides it from there, obviously, because I took it out of there. Well, I'm going to view the source on here, and we're going to scroll and try to find this. So we've got, here's the image right here. And we can see I've got ID is equal to image dash 20. So this works really well if you need to, for some reason, identify a particular ID um, on a particular element within your template. Um, you can do different things with JavaScript and jQuery with that or you can assign certain CSS and different things like that. So that's where it really comes in useful. Um, that's all the placeholders we're going to take a look at for now. So one last one that we'll take a look at in the uh, final screencast that will be coming up. But again, thanks for tuning in.